Hello and welcome to today's episode of the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you some of the top stories from around the world. Let's take a look at today's headlines. Indian farmers mark one year of historic struggle. Peru's President Castillo faces impeachment motion. Turkish women's protest attacked by the police. And Israel to expand illegal East Jerusalem settlements. November 26th officially marks one year since hundreds of thousands of Indian farmers began their march to the borders of Delhi. Thousands of farmers from the states of Punjab and Haryana arrived at the sit-in sites on Friday. Celebrations were held just days after Prime Minister Narendra Modi finally announced the repeal of the three farm laws. The Union Cabinet approved a bill to formalize the action on November 24th. It will now be introduced in Parliament next week. The struggle achieved this victory despite sustained attempts by the Bharatiya Janata Party to malign the protest and dismissed its demands. The sit-in also highlighted the major but often invisibilized contributions of women not only to the farming sector but also to popular struggles. They also rejected comments made by the Indian Supreme Court that women and children should not be protesting at the border. Even though the repeal has been announced, farmers are staying at the border until other demands are met. These include a guaranteed minimum support price and the withdrawal of the Electricity Amendment Bill. They are also demanding compensation for families of the over 700 farmers who are believed to have died during the protest. Several people arrested during the protest also remain in jail. Hundreds of farmers arrived at Delhi's Ghazipur border on Friday carrying vegetables, oil and other necessities to continue the sitting. Tractor rallies and demonstrations were held across India including in the states of Punjab, Haryana, Uttar Pradesh, Bihar and Karnataka. Next we go to Peru where the opposition has filed a motion of impeachment against left-wing President Pedro Castillo. The motion was filed in the Congress on November 25th, citing a moral incapacity to govern. 28 legislators, including members of the right-wing Popular Force Party, supported the action. Congress will now decide whether to initiate impeachment hearings in a session on December 7th. The motion will require 52 votes in the 130-member body to pass. 87 votes will be required for the actual impeachment. Opposition lawmakers have alleged that Castillo interfered in promotions within the armed forces and appointments in the Customs and Tax Organization, Sunat. It will now be up to the Congress to determine the content and interpretation of the moral incapacity argument. The impeachment motion is part of a sustained right-wing campaign against the Castillo administration. The Alba Movimientos coalition had already warned of a coup against the president in August, even saying that right-wing forces would focus their efforts on Congress. The opposition holds a majority and has repeatedly threatened to vote against the cabinet. On August 17th, former Foreign Minister Hector Behar was forced to resign. In October, Castillo was forced to reshuffle seven members of his cabinet, including Prime Minister Guido Bellido. On November 8, former Defence Minister Walter Ayala became the 10th member of the cabinet who was forced to resign. He was similarly accused of interfering in appointments in the armed forces. Thousands of people held a march in Turkey on Thursday to mark the International Day for the Elimination of Violence Against Women. The action took place in Istanbul and was organized by the 25th November Women's Platform. Protesters stated that they were marching against patriarchy, poverty, war, discrimination and against the massacres of women, including the murders of trans women. The Communist Party-led Women's Solidarity Committee also participated in the protest under the slogan, Women Don't Fit in the Present Order. As people marched through Istanbul, riot police set up barricades to restrict the crowd. However, when some women tried to climb over the barricades, 
police started firing tear gas and rubber bullets. Thursday's protest was part of a week-long national mobilization. According to the We Will Stop Femicide Group, at least 285 women have been killed by men in 2021. Activists have been demanding that Turkey rejoin the Istanbul Convention. President Erdogan officially withdrew from the 2011 treaty on July 1st. Ruling conservatives alleged that the treaty was harming traditional family structures and spreading homosexuality. Since then, activists have been mobilizing for stricter protections. They have also argued that despite the fact that Turkey never fully implemented the Istanbul Convention, it still served as a key guiding framework for other laws in the country. It is also a legally binding document, which means that parties are required to prevent, investigate and punish acts of gender-based violence. And finally, we look at Israel's plan to build 9,000 new illegal settlement homes in occupied East Jerusalem. These will stretch from the Palestinian neighborhood of Beit Hanina to the Kalandia military checkpoint in the occupied West Bank. The Palestinian Authority has said that the plans aim to complete the separation of Jerusalem from its Palestinian surroundings. This is part of a process to Judaize and annex the city and change its historical, legal and demographic reality. The Palestinian people hold East Jerusalem as the capital of their future state. Meanwhile, Israel has claimed the entirety of Jerusalem as its capital, a claim not recognized internationally. Israel's settlements are also a violation of international law. Nearly 700,000 Israeli settlers live in 145 illegal settlements and 140 outposts in the occupied West Bank and East Jerusalem. Israel has expanded its settlements while systematically denying housing permits to Palestinians. International bodies and rights groups have also documented a marked increase in settler violence. The United Nations documented 410 attacks against Palestinians between January and October 2021. These included 108 cases of injury and 302 incidents of destruction of property. Occupation security forces are known to either not report to the scene at all or stand by or actively participate in the violence. According to Israeli human rights organization Yeshdin, 91% of inquiries into settler attacks against Palestinians between 2005 and 2019 were closed with no charges filed. Meanwhile, Palestinian organizations, which are doing crucial work of documenting such abuse, have been criminalized. And that's all for today. For more such stories, visit our website at www.peoplesdispatch.org and follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Thank you.